Whoa! Oh my god! I just took a look inside. It's a Siamese spitting cobra. Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Here's a look at my local area um, during the daytime. You can see some big storm clouds in the distance. Not sure if they're gonna make us, but if you look over here, it's raining not too far away, so maybe. But uh, yeah, we're out during the daytime today. Ooh, hello. This episode and probably the following ones are gonna be about tracking down the final species I have to see here in Hua Hin. Now, you may remember in the very first video, I said there's around 30 species in the area. Now, I'm very close to completing that. I think I've got about six remaining. I'll just run them on screen right now so you can see because I'm not gonna list them off, but some of them are day active, quite a few of them actually. Um, so we're gonna be out here cruising up and down this road before this rain comes in, which is always a good time to herp. And we're gonna see if we can find something. And I'm going out this evening with David and the guys to a spot just west where we're gonna look for Indo-Chinese rat snakes. So I'll either catch you then, or I'll catch you if I find something on the road here, which is unlikely, but let's see what we get. Whoa! Oh my God! I cannot believe this. I, I just filmed the segment. I don't know if I'll put it in, but I literally just saw one of these. Oh, going off the road. And I was like, that's it. I missed my one chance of seeing a snake out on this daytime road cruise. And then just cruising middle of this pineapple, whoa, pineapple fields area. Look at this. Whoa, he's hyped. Big oriental rat snake, T.S. mucosa. Let's go, man. Oh my God. I've literally never herped this species in Thailand before. I've seen it in other countries, but here, oh wow. And it's huge too. I've got a couple of these on, on, on rescue call outs recently. Oh, thunder's getting a lot closer. But this is the first one I've actually herped. And man, what an awesome snake. Come here. All right, I'm gonna see if I can calm it down and get some better video, but that thing's like two and a half meters at least. All right, I've been trying to calm him down for a while now, but the rain is getting closer and I'm not getting any more luck. So I think this is the best I'm gonna be able to show to you guys, especially as he's on some serious boss biting and shit. But let's see if we can get a good look at the, the head here. You see it has this very distinctive uh, black barring on the labial scales, that's, that's the lips. And uh, of course, the stripes on the tail, the strong banding, very distinctive. The Thai name for this species is the striped-tailed lion snake. And I actually really like the Thai names for the rat snakes. They call them lion snakes. I want to be careful because he might just lunge at me any second. He's been striking. Ooh. Yeah, what a cool snake. So, ah, <laughs> he got me on the leg. You see those little, little markings there? Damn, bro. All right, scratch that. I've actually been able to get this guy to calm down quite a bit. You see, it's got all cloudy now. The, the storm clouds are coming in, but this huffer and puffer is just... Got his, I'm not even holding him. His tail's what well, I am now, but his tail was wrapped around me for a while. I'm just going to take some pictures quickly. Whoa! <laughs> Maybe not that calm. And uh, let him go, but awesome. Awesome. Huge... 2.5 meter plus T.S. mucosa. Now that is a cool snake. Okay, so really surprise addition to this video. Um, I got them home and then Cass gave me a call and they saw a snake in the garage of the place where you work. And I just took a look inside. It's so packed of golfing gear and everything in here. Uh, she said it was a dark snake about this thick and it actually is. It's a Siamese spitting cobra. Uh, I saw it going down the back between these boxes here. here. So we're gonna, yeah. Did you not see it? No, I didn't. Okay, yeah, 100% uh, Siamese spitting cobra. But you can stop the video because we're probably gonna take a minute to move some stuff around. I've adopted some, uh, some bike glasses or, or snorkeling glasses. I don't know what, what the hell I've got on, but yeah. some eye protection for the moment. Me and Harry are about to, about to go in and get this guy out now, now that we've cleared a lot of stuff out of the way. Right, well, there you have it. You can see the head, Siamese spitting cobra, nice big adult, tucked up behind these boxes. Oh, it's fine. We're going to get him out now. 
he was kind of inching his way yeah. towards the... Oh wait, are you getting him out of the hook? Yeah. Okay, I thought you might do it there. Do you want me to just give you as much space as possible? Uh, if you can shine the torch down there. Yeah. Wait, I, so, I was looking for my head torch when I left. Does that help? Mm, not so much. What, like this maybe? Mm. Let me know if you need any instructions, like, or any assistance, mm -hmm. like me to move or anything. Do you want to get his tail? Yeah. Okay, now just gently coerce him out into the garden here, out into the front yard. Inside. Yeah, it is. That is, that is serious business. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Okay, that is that is an adult spitting cobra if I've ever seen one. Do you want me to distract it? It's just not paying much attention to us at all yet. Yeah, yeah, we can get this guy out and when we release it. Snake bags which don't have like handles attached to them, you know. And there you go. You see, very tempting. And that's one snake, one spitting cobra out of the garage, right there. All right, so we just got the boss out and he's, uh, he's taking a focus on me for a second. David, show me your face. This happened like seconds after. Sprayed right to the face, but David was like crouching down, like trying to kiss it or something. I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a sense the spitting was about to come. But yeah, really nice, sizable one dark it is very nice and dark yeah you can see when it puffs up you can see like the traces of where bands once were on the body but otherwise uh, it's really really nice and dark what an awesome example of a Fahin locality Naja Siamensis and it's almost completely lost its you can just see the pattern on the neck got me in the face again yeah I saw that and on the neck I was probably moving a bit too much though but what I was trying to show was this Harry, can you like wave your boot in its face? I'm trying to see the back of its head. It's almost completely lost its spectacle markings from the back of the head. They're just very faint brown markings there now. Okay, so we've got a nice little run around with this guy and uh, we're only like 500 meters max around the corner from the house where we got it. Like not even that, maybe a couple hundred meters if that. But yeah, really, really cool to see this. Very unexpected turn to the day. And uh, the largest Simensis I've ever seen here, but I haven't seen that many. I've only seen four or something, so. Awesome. What the boss! What the boss! The spot we've come to tonight is a really interesting one. Oh, look at this. Look at this fat spider spinning its web. It's like this super open forest in a floodplain mostly with like smaller trees but there are some some larger trees here too and it's surprisingly damp area so maybe gives way to a few species we wouldn't necessarily expect to be here um it's nice and easy to walk around in but very very easy to get lost in and i, I don't know where the guys are right now so i'm gonna make sure i know where the bike is <laughs> all right just spotted the first snake we can get up close to on our walk and it's this pretty decent sized sunbeam Came out to check out this pond where you can hear all these raucous frogs and yeah, typical sunbeam hab habitat, sort of swampy area. This one's really decent size. Definitely the biggest one I've ever seen around this area by a significant margin, but they're not typically that common in the Huajin area, as I mentioned in the previous video, just because it's so dry, but these guys don't always come out so well in hand because they're very wriggly, but Going to chill out for a second, you can see that ultra depressed head made for sort of burrowing and moving around. But these guys are, you know, as I said before, are very much everything snakes. They will hunt in the water, dig under loose soil, and even climb trees at times. But very nice chocolatey brown snake with a cool phenotype, just a very interesting and unique species we get here in Thailand. Not really any other species like it. It's just very similar to Clelia of South America, you know? I, 
Anyway, got a lot, a lot of love for this one, but I showed a small one recently in a video. So I'm gonna let this cool snake go back to its business around here. All right, I just found the next catchable snake of our walk. And it is one that I've been looking to find in the Huahin area since I got here. That is the Indo-Chinese rat snake, T.S. Koros. Come here. Oh, look at that yellow venter. All right, I'm gonna calm it down then start filming again. All right, so just as I was calming down this Koros, I looked in the same sort of patch of bushes. There's a Parius margaritiforus there as well. Now, I don't think I've actually shown one of these from the Hua Hin area on my channel yet. So what I find most interesting is like, we wouldn't really expect to find this one so west, usually, no, so east, sorry. They're usually active a bit more further west, but we'll also get a hand on this one. But the main focus of the video for now is a, a species which brings me even closer to completing the Hua Hin species list. Just look at those big diurnal eyes. Of course, this is a harmless diurnal colubrid, very fast moving, extremely hard to catch during the day. Even if you get them crossing roads, usually they're off the road long before you get a chance. But yeah, I'm a big fan of the rat snakes in general, T.S. genus and I've seen one of these this year down the south of Thailand, but this is the first one alive in the Hua Hin area, despite seeing them dead in my complex. But this is just a little one. They get probably double the size of this. I feel something crawling up my leg. One sec. Now that the uh, ant is off my leg, we can see this guy, really nice shaped head. So sleek and like streamlined, this snake. Um, they do have some faint banding on their like lateral half of the body before it becomes this interesting black edged sort of pattern towards the tail which always distinguishes them and this one has a really vibrant yellow venter as well i don't know how that easy that is to see on camera without overexposing but it's really really bright so yeah all around very nice snake definitely going to take some pictures of this one okay on to the second snake now yeah we saw this uh, cute little thing down in the south of thailand but if you remember the ones down the south always have the orange collar Whereas the ones up here like almost always have this yellow collar or sometimes like a faded white collar. I don't know. This is a weird aggregate uh, of species and it's very unknown like which is which, where is where. But it's cute and definitely one we wouldn't expect to see uh, so c far east. Um, we're not that far east, but we're further east than usually get these guys. So yeah, super cute snakes which never bite. What they do is they uh, musk. You see that? It smells really bad. So I'm going to have to wash my hands pronto because that is extremely gross, but they just cruise around on the ground and in low vegetation, eating snails and slugs. And they're quite pretty. We get very blasé to these because of how common they are. But uh, yeah, first one we're showing in the Hua Hin area. So pretty productive video for new stuff so far. Um, I'm not gonna take any pictures of this one, I don't think, but yeah, what a lovely snake. Two quick fire finds right there. Okay, next find of the night is one we saw earlier and hence why I said the sunbeam wasn't the first snake of the night. David found this one resting high above the stream and, and we just went back and retrieved it. But lovely Dendrolaphus pictus with uh, a lot of blue on the neck, particularly blue individual. Definitely the nicer bronze back in the area. I prefer them to Subocularis, which is probably the blandest in the country. And you distinguish them by those two black stripes on those two black ventrolateral stripes, as well as the lack of the vertebral stripe on the back of the neck. But yeah, absolutely lovely. Beautiful species. All right, just caught another sunbeam on the edge of the pool. This one a little smaller than the last one. I don't know if you can see if it's a little darker, but they tend to become more chocolatey brown the larger they get. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bug on me. But yeah, same kind of deal as before. Lovely little shovel, shovel headed snake. These guys are super abundant after nights of rain, like we've had, or, or days of rain. They really come out in force. And this one's just hunting frogs around the edge of this pond in the background there. But yeah, I'm not going to take any pictures of this one. Just going to show it to you briefly and then let it go. So instead of cruising, we've decided to check out a cave area that we've never been to before. So I'm hitting two new spots tonight, which is kind of interesting. Let's see if we can find anything here. First snake of the cave walk is good old Ahetala Prass, a little whitish grayish juvenile. I'm gonna leave it in situ because it's kind of far away. 
didn't see anything but Prasina in the cave area, but we did get this Marg on the way out. I've shown one of these already tonight. This isn't the typical area we find them, but it started going the wrong way. Here we go. Bye bye. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's doing this stupid fake defensive posture. All right. Just added the second local species of Parius to the night. We see these all the time in our outside the house, but this is probably the smallest one I've seen since I've been here. Little juvenile bird more. Let's let him go. On the drive back, we got a uh, obligatory nogata. I haven't seen too many of these on the drive back on my recent couple trips out west, but nice to see one again. Very healthy, fat male with some sort of pinkish tones and yeah, not your typical hua hin specimen, but still quite pale. Uh, someone can insert their boot near it and show the size. Look at the tail, it's like red, unlike the standard black tail. Yeah, it's like that one, remember that one we got on the, uh, we got on the, like, uh, Amphiesma Road? That one had like a red tail, that one I took back to the house to photograph. Yeah, yeah.